Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week on the Alfa Romeo, we're going to get into the most fun stuff there is, wiring. Alright guys, welcome back, and those of you who were watching last week will have seen that I finished up all the framework for my centre console, uh, putting in all of the switches and uh, cup holders and all the rest of the bits and pieces. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up, and um, like always, please think about subscribing and also uh, clicking that bell, it actually makes a difference to uh, um, getting these uh, videos out there. So. Um, Couple of things from last week. Um, people keep commenting there's only one cup holder and uh, Mrs. Jeff doesn't get a cup holder. Well, uh, there were comments saying that I could potentially sort of offset them uh, in the, uh, the center, but there, there, just, there just isn't enough room in that part there. What I am considering doing, and uh, I will uh, be interested to hear your, your thoughts on it, is um, I think I might actually put the second cup holder behind the handbrake. So it's not the most convenient place to put a cup holder, I know, but uh, it's still better having a second cup holder. Say you've, we've both had a cup of coffee and uh, you've got the empty cup somewhere, you can stick it into the cup holder back there. And it's only uh, just, uh, just a, uh, you know, you can just reach behind. I mean, even as a driver, I'd be able to reach in and get it, but uh, um, the passenger can definitely easily sort of just reach between the seats and get the uh, cup. So it's way to have two cup holders and there's nothing going on behind. There's no back seats, there's no uh, uh, any of that. So some of you guys may have noticed in the uh, the last week or so when I was digging around and working on this center console that there's this big mess of wires sitting in the floor and uh, sort of wiring everywhere inside under the dash of the Alferrari. And uh, I have to do something with that. I can't just hope that it magically all connects up and works and does what it's supposed to do. Um, that magical stuff is <laughs> stuff that I have to actually put together. So I've got... Um, a bunch of stuff that I've already labelled and already uh, and marked out. I've got a fuse box that's got to go in here. I've got my uh, my little motorbike PDM that I've got. Uh, that's mostly already connected up. Uh, most of the wiring loom to the engine is done already. That that's already connected up for the ECU. But I've got a lot of these wires need to uh, are some of the outputs that don't necessarily go to the engine, so gauges and and things like that. So I need to work out what I need, what I don't, remove what I don't, and. Uh, and see if I can sort of make heads or tails of some of this mess. So all of this mess of wires all through here is all organized chaos in theory. Uh, so for starters, all of these black wires here that I, uh, I sort of grouped through, this is all of the grounding wires. So I made them all in the black, uh, ground in this car is black, so uh, I, what I've got is I've got a, uh, an M6 bolt here that I'm going to actually um, drill in and weld into the body up here and actually make a nice, good, uh, solid ground that uh, they will all be ground into nicely. So let's do that. So I drill a hole just smaller than the tip of the flange head bolt so it just sits through nicely and then I can just weld around the edge a nice, easy earth stud. Now I'm just combining a bunch of the earth wires to make a nice ground and bolt it into place. And there we have a nice neat earth stud that's uh, going to hopefully not give us any issues. So I've started to wire up my starter motor. Now this is where I'm going to get a lot of the power for the car just because this is the uh, closest positive terminal. And uh, that little wire is not going to cut it. What I've got is I've got a massive 10 gauge wire here that I need to run from that starter motor all the way down through the tunnel all the way to the battery that is in the boot. And then there'll be another large cable going through the engine bay through to the alternator. So here I'm preparing my cable. I'm putting a fitting on the end using my hydraulic swage tool bit of heat shrink and I've got a nice custom heavy duty battery cable. So now I'm fitting a 
fuse and relay box so I can sort out all of the powers to all of the systems in the car and uh, then I add a couple of labels so I know what does what. All right, well that was a lot of time going through all of this stuff which is not very interesting so there's very little filmed but uh, I have my fuse box, relay box here um, just going through and working out what needs, what power, where uh, I sort of did did it obviously when I built the loom, but it's just going through and doing things again. It takes me a while to get my head into uh, sort of wiring zone and <laughs> realizing what I need and where. But uh, I have my my uh, I sort of fuse box wired up here. This is the back of it, uh, which has a nice cover. Uh, I've also got a 40 amp fuse on the side, which is the main power coming into the fuse box, and. Uh, and I've labelled my fuses on the uh, on the lid that will go over the top. So I have my layout there. That's ready to go. I've also had to go through, this is the control unit for the Yaris electric power steering. So you need to run um, the, the, the brain for the power steering, but it has a limp mode, which is basically what I'm going to be using. And it just gives you a set uh, sort of mild assistance. So uh, that's what I've got here. Um, I had to, I didn't have plugs, so I actually found an old car stereo plug, because uh, this I got this unit by itself from a wrecker. Uh, still got the writing on it. And uh, yeah, I found a car stereo plug with pins in sort of similar-ish sort of locations and trimmed it up and made it fit. And now I've actually got some nice uh, uh, plugs there to connect it in. And uh, this is pretty basic. It just needs um, big power in and uh, and ground. And uh, and then just, um, besides just plugging plugging it back to the, uh, the motor itself, uh, just needs a 12 volt ignition source. So very simple. So it's time to bolt this all in in the back here and, uh, and then we can uh, move ahead with something else because this is really, really time consuming. So I know wiring makes for a super boring video, but uh, it takes my head a little while to sort of get back into the scheme of things and working out sort of into wiring modes and working out what's going on, what I need to do, where it needs to go. And now I'm here, I was actually planning on doing some more visually interesting stuff this video, but I'm thinking that it's better to just stick to the job at hand and get it done. So it's not that interesting, but what I've got to do now is this big mess of wires down here, the ECU wiring, I've already wired the engine side of everything, but now there's the internal side. So I've got a list here of all the different um, uh, wires I need to connect up, like uh, connecting up to the speed sensor in the gearbox, the, the speed in and the speed out of the ECU to the speedo itself, um, the taco out, fuel pump, uh, oil pressure gauge, water temperature gauge, uh, all the cruise control outputs, the uh, accelerator pedal, and, uh, and a bunch of these bits and pieces. Now I've got these things worked out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, take a bunch of these wires and work out which ones I need and uh, connect up a couple of uh, Deutsch connectors in there so that I can just sort of plug and unplug the, uh, the main loom away from the uh, ECU loom and then hopefully tidy up a bunch of this mess. Okay, so I've gone through and uh, and I've now wired a couple of Deutsch plugs into the wires I need for it coming from the ECU. I got a kit from Raceworks, which has got a whole bunch of different sizes in it. Uh, you know, three pin, four pin, two pin, six pin, 12 pin, whatever. Um, and uh, makes things really easy to put together a nice, uh, nice, neat connection. Uh, they're waterproof and all that sort of stuff. and. When you've got the, all the right pliers and stuff, it makes it super quick and easy to, uh, to make a connection. I'll just show you now. It's literally that quick and simple and uh, even demonstrating it for the camera. And then there's just like these little lock off pieces that go in, but you can also 
unpin them if you need to. Uh, it just makes life really simple. It makes a nice, good, solid connection. No stuffing around with uh, different bits and pieces. So I'm, I'm a big fan of these things. Um, so I'm gonna go through now and finish up wiring up the other end of those uh, plugs. And uh, yeah, then hopefully we can then go through and deep in the ones we don't need out of the ECU. So this really doesn't look like I got much done for the best part of three days of work. But um, I actually have so much of this wiring sorted out. I know it's not an interesting episode, but that's just the way it goes. Um, I have my bulkheads all connected up down in here. I have my link ECU, which is up under here, all plugged in and connected up. You can sort of see it just in the back there. Um, I have my fuse box set up. Uh, connect it up. I have an earthing spot. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of the foundation worked out of how things are going to work. I also spend a lot of time, a crazy amount of time, trying to sort out the air conditioning um, hoses. I've managed to find all the bits and pieces. It says a lot for getting a kit that's all made up already. By buying separate components, they all have different um, fittings on them, there's different types of fittings, there's, there's, there's not like a universal sort of air conditioning fitting set, set up, there's just so many different ones, trying to find everything that will be able to fit together with the right size hoses and I think I have it sorted and have all that stuff ordered as well, so that is coming. Um, the wiring, I am feeling so much better about this, it's something I've been putting off because I knew it was going to be a headache and I think I'm most of the way there, which is just absolutely amazing. There's still stuff, I still got to connect up the dash um, and, the, uh, and, and do something about the gauges, which I've already got a plan for. Um, I've got like um, the, the center console wiring to do the buttons and, and things like that. But the, uh, the, the core, the heart of the wiring is done. The, uh, the ECU is all wired up and loom is set up. Uh, yeah. We're a long way forward, but uh, I'm definitely out of time, so I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, one of the little known Ferrari prototypes was released in Geneva in 1993. It was the FZ93. The Formula Zagato 93, or FZ93, was penned by Ercoldi Sparta at Zagato, and it aimed to take design features from the 1991 Formula 1 car. It featured bare carbon fibre bumpers, front and rear, with a pointed nose design, a lot of which inspired the Enzo, which was to come some 10 years later. When it was first released, it featured an awkward two-tone paint job with large prancing horses on either side of the car, which distracted from the lines of the car. It was later repainted to be all red, as it remains today. Underneath it was built on a 512TR chassis, which retained its flat V12 power plant with a little changed. On its release, it was met with mixed reviews of many preferring the original Pina Farina design Testarossa better. The FZ93 is still around, not around here obviously, and it can still be found in the Zagato collection in Milan. Ah, oh, that was uh, that was a very boring episode, I'm sure. Like, uh, wiring is never fun, but uh, I actually discovered something that I missed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Earlier, I just always assumed that there was a speed sensor pickup um, built into the gearbox, and I didn't think that it's a modern car, which has wheel speed sensors to work with the ABS and uh, stability control and stuff like that. So it doesn't need a speed sensor in the gearbox. So the two plugs in there, one's reverse light and one is something else, I'm not exactly sure, but... Uh, it's not a speed sensor, so I'm gonna to have to fix one to the diff somehow or something. I'm gonna to have to come up with something like I did on the, uh, the 911. Um, so it's just <sighs> another thing that I missed along the way, but I'll, I'll, I'll but work something out. part of the fun of it, right? Yeah, that's it. That's the joy yeah, of like, building silly cars. If you're just cars. bashing this car out in a couple of weeks, you'd just, I mean, think. Think, think of the, how many cars I'd have. Think of the rich. <laughs> 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 <Ew. laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> time to go. Let Jeff know what you think, he loves your comments. As you know, if you want to help him out, Patreon. And uh, like, subscribe, and we will see you soon. See you next time. Cool. See we must have a squeaky then. Sorry, still getting over that. <laughs> right.
was released in Geneva in 1993. It was the FZ93. <laughs> 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 oh. <And> it's... <laughs> <laughs> Underneath it was built on a 512TR chassis, which were trained Retrained? 512TR chassis, which retained, <laughs> retained its flat V12 plow. Plow plant. <laughs> God. <laughs> on a 512TR chassis, which underneath it was built on a 512TR chassis, which retrained. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I don't know, that, that, that was a really challenging sentence for me. <laughs> I don't know, what they, something about the T's and the R's and the P's and the L's. 